Welcome back to Troll Mountain, where we're stuck. And we're not just stuck, like two of our most capable vehicles kind of stuck. You guys may remember this mountain from the Big Iron series where we came out here. This two day project is a week. That was violent. We're gonna go to the Cabelco, try to start it. If it doesn't, then uh, we're just gonna start breaking these machines down. This mountain is not to be messed with. It is. It looks very, you know, calm and nice. That's a lie, it doesn't look calm and nice. It looks bold and mean. And boy, is it mean. This is literally like a three hour drive one way to our shop and it's in the middle of nowhere. There's no services, no fuel, no nothing around. So when you come out, you gotta be fully prepared. So we brought everything. We brought all sorts of tools and equipment, trucks and trailers, and we never ended up getting it all back down before the snow started falling. Well, it's been sitting out here for four or five months, which is frustrating because we use all that stuff on a regular basis. So we thought, let's head back to Troll Mountain and get the rest of our stuff. It might be a little bit of snow out there, but it's okay. We've got the 10 by 10 Hemet and we've got the dozer. We'll find our way through. We weren't even gonna film it. It was just gonna be a, just a regular day of picking stuff up. Little did Bud, Alan, Hans, and myself know that we would be in for quite the rodeo. And we should have known, we should have known, I know. Long story short, on the way down, push and plowing, and Alan driving the 10 by 10, he basically just drove into a big fluffy, like four foot drift that just stopped the 10 by 10. I was down the road a little ways. I start making my way back up and plowing, and I get to right here, which is one of the deepest drift parts right here, and the dozer's not wanting to push anymore, so I'm like, screw it. I'll just drive off the road, back up, and push the 10 by 10 from behind. I am so hungry, I could use a pizza right now. I got just the thing, Alan. Dave mentioned an app we can order off of called Food Bud, I guess. This must be Bud himself, and he has pizzas. Order now. Listen, man, I ordered a while ago. Where is this guy? Okay, I'm just going to give him a call. Uh, yes, I'm just checking on the status of my pizza. I'm coming! There's your food. Are you not gonna tip me? Yeah, the only tip I'd give you is get another job. Boys ready to eat? Food is oh, here. Uh, I told you I was gonna order Grubhub because they were sponsored today's video. Grubhub, you already know what it is. It is literally one of the coolest services because when you're out on the job or at home and you don't wanna leave, for whatever reason, you don't wanna go to a restaurant, which I actually kinda of hate going to restaurants just because of the hassle. You jump on the app, find what you want, click buy, and they deliver it to you easy, fast, and the lowest prices in the entire market. And the best part is, you don't even have to deal with the driver. No contact to live with, just drop it off at your doorstep. Grubhub for the win. Now listen, since Grubhub was nice enough to sponsor this video and help us with this very expensive recovery, I'm gonna ask you guys to return the favor and click the link in my description below. Go to Grubhub, use my promo code HEAVYDSPARKS, you're gonna get $5 off any order of $15 or more. It's a no brainer, it's a good deal. And the service, as soon as I drove off the road, we found one of the deepest drifts up here. And now the dozer's are stuck. And when I say stuck, like the tracks literally just sit there and spin. It may not look that bad, but we're on like a solid 30 degree slope here. A massive drift that we have to break through. You can see how deep it is behind it. But the problem's about to be solved with Mr. Beast. Look at him over there. Happy as could be. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Is that how they say it? Am I taking too long on the intro? Okay, well, here's the plan. Mountains right now, we're the like, plan is. I'm gonna bring the beast over and plow in front of it so we can easily get to it. We're gonna hook our big Yankum rope to it and just give her a old tug ski. That should pull it onto the shallow part and then we'll just have that thing start working its way down to the valley. From there, we gotta go up and pull the 10 by 10, which that'll be an easy pull once I plow the road. I'm not even gonna say they're easy, but two complicated recoveries, but we've got a very capable vehicle to do it. So.
Take a guess to what we're up to. $880. $437. What kind of day are we going to have today, Alan? We're going to have a very interesting day. Should be fairly simple with the uh, with the beast. Should be easy to get the uh, dozer and then the uh, 10 by out. The hardest thing is, is just getting the beast up there because uh, the gates are pretty narrow and the roads are pretty narrow. So that's going to be the biggest issue is the beast is so big. thought about it. feet of snow and walk around top of it because the wind blows across and just firms it right up and then all of a sudden you sink and it's just just pure sugar. The best part about it is we got out here, got to our sandy loader that we left out here and the 10 by 10 Hemet and they hadn't been touched for six months. Worried that maybe the batteries were dead, they're gonna have a hard time starting. Both of them fired right up. Head up the mountain a little bit, find the old dozer that we recovered from up here, which we left here to help recover everything else. We're like, oh, we'll see if it starts. Boom, fires right up. So all the equipment's running great. Everything's fine, but it's getting dark. We're getting a little bit, uh, you know, moving faster than we should because we're trying to get off the mountain and get down in the valley. So Dave tells us as soon as we get here, he deemed it right when we got here. He said, oh, this is gonna be a quick trip, not, not a big deal. 
we'll be in and out. And I was like, all right, okay, Dave, I'm not saying no more. Yeah, seven hours later, getting home at 2 a.m. It was a little rough, and it was cold. Oh, it was so cold, so cold, man. But we got home. Oh, man. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with oh, you. Cigarette down. Go. <laughs> companies by far my favorite because I'm the one usually stuck fueling everything these works containers yeah that's good there's nothing worse than trying to fill dozers up on the side of the mountain with a stupid five gallon gas can these works cans they come with these pumps literally you just hook up to a battery or they have a battery style where you just flip on the pump boom you just start pumping away you go way better than stupid five gallon gas cans scattered from here to Narnia to get a 30 gallon works container and call it good. 100% we're gonna get killed right here. This image right here gives you a good idea of how stuck this machine was. I plowed out all the snow around it and now it's on its own little island. Uh, we, we had quite a ways to go before we were hitting dirt and it was very well high centered. So um, I've got it plowed out so much that I'm pretty sure it's just gonna drive right out now, but we'll see. Attempt number one, I'm just gonna move the blade and the ripper, try to get it to like pick up and down a little bit. And it should break all that snow, or should break all that snow out from underneath it. Then I should just be able to drive it out. So I don't think we'll even need to pull it.
Dozer's out. Didn't even have to pull on it. Just kind of wiggled its way out. But it was definitely in there. We were not getting out that night. No, there's no way we would have got out that night in there. I'm just glad that we decided to give up early yeah. that night instead of doing a two hour, three hour, four hour dig. We're learning a lot. All right. The black sling and the ranger, and then let's make sure that that gets brought down with us. Oh boy. As Dave was uh, plowing with the dozer, he left it a bit high right here in this whole drift area. There's about 100 feet of drift. And uh, because when he stopped, I had to stop and stopping's not a good thing. I might have made it through if I hadn't stopped, but I had no alternative because we had other things in the way. down to there, get it turned around on that turn, and then I'll plow the road, come back up. It's a great, the viewers are going to love this footage. Highest quality they're going to get. I'm going to start putting a hidden camera on you to catch how many times you fall. I've seen Bro. you fall at least three times today where you didn't just think anybody saw it. It's not my best day. But what is the plan right now? Oh, okay, so the plan is to get away from this loud snowcast when we talk. Hemet, unstuck. Dozer, unstuck. To the top of Troll Mountain we go. We have so much stuff up there that I'm going to plow the road with the cats so that we can actually get the 10 by 10 up there because it's, it'd be like 20 trips on the Ranger. Unfortunately, right now, with how drifty the road is, 10 by 10 wasn't gonna make it, as you saw. So I can plow it, he'll fall behind me, we'll get as close as we can, load it up, and what if we're out of here before dark? That'd be so weird. I wouldn't even know what to do with myself.
pushed it all out at the end of the trench. As you can see, it's the exact width of the dozer blade, which is not quite wide enough for the snowcat to fit in. And if I try to drive the snowcat, kind of like bridging the gap, it'll make the tracks run at a funny angle, and it could potentially pump the track off, which is something that we just don't want to deal with right now. That's the definition of ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that! How's it coming? Well, it's doing pretty good. This thing is almost making it, but once it gets over around two feet, then it starts to slip. And then I found that this thing was popping out of diff lock. Now that I understand that, it's not gonna be so bad. Uh-oh. Caught on the thing, I'm afraid we're gonna take out the... Oh well, he just wants to go. Problem is, it's almost like ice in some places, and that's uh, it's trying to break through it. Once you get through that big drift, you just got a little small one that's not so bad. But the edge, I'm going to try to turn this thing and go straight down. dark uh, and we got the hemet up here which is awesome because that's gonna make getting all of our stuff down so much easier we had a Ranger and an ATV still up here we're gonna load them along with everything else here in the container uh, throw it back up on the truck call it good so probably got 30 minutes worth of uh, cleanup to do and then uh, start working our way back down the mountain so much stuff up here. cables a freaking old connex completely full of our stuff
That's it, huh? <laughs> That's it. Now we just gotta get down. I have a feeling tonight it's gonna go okay. But uh, in the past, getting down has been the hard part with the giant machines. We got everything loaded up and uh, we're getting out of here. It's really cold up here. We got pretty much everything loaded in the dumpster. We're out of here. I wanna set the mood with uh, some mood lighting here real quick. Hey. Oh, wrong one, that one, there we go. So that truck, I love it. It's probably my favorite vehicle, other than the Beast and my helicopter and a bunch of other vehicles. But I love it, but I just cannot figure out what to call it. Every time I talk about it, I call something different. 10 by 10, Hemet, uh, PLS. I gotta figure out a good name for it. Those are off the mountain still. done with Troll Mountain. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of sad. This place really tested literally every aspect of us, our equipment, our ability to work as a team, and man, it was a good time. Got all of our equipment loaded up and we are headed back home. Anyways guys, that's the finale for the Big Iron Series. I know we started it last fall and we're ending it now in middle of winter, but I hope you guys enjoyed it because we definitely learned a lot and we had a great time and we tested our equipment and we broke a lot of stuff. And now we're on to the next one. 